It's easy to talk about ahimsa, very easy, but it's one of the most difficult things to practice. But that does not mean that we should not use it as an idea. Mm. It's like a mountain climber, you know, who, if he keeps looking at the peak, he will never reach the peak. He will only be disappointed. He will say, what am I going to do? But if he instead focuses on his next step. Say, okay, that's my goal. I have to take the next step. What do I do? And in the case of someone who is seeking ahimsa, that means listen to your conscience when you are taking the next step. If we can do that, that's all that we can do to reach that goal. We cannot reach that goal while we are in caught in what's called mind and maya. We have to go beyond that, the par brahma stage, before we can really practice ahimsa. But we can still take steps towards that inner condition by which we can practice ahimsa. Look, unless you are ready to die, you cannot practice non-violence. Unless you are ready to, to die, die, you cannot practice non-violence. That means you have to detach yourself from the body and the mind from the narrow self. No. The role that the ego plays, the homey plays in our lives. And the importance of that role in understanding Ahimsa. As we listen to our conscience, morality gradually flowers into spirituality mm. where it gets replaced by an inner voice conscience. So people like Gandhi had what could be called an inner voice mm -hmm. in which you know you had the which disown. He, famous, he famously called it the still small voice within. That's right. That's you know disown which you focused on in one of your yes very beautiful expression I think of you know the Jharkhandis talk of and all the traditions can you talk of how you you evolve from the part to the whole. Oh, that's what the word disown means. That is what the disown means. From the ordinary person to Purnam. Yes. Purnamada, Purnamidam. So each one of us is actually Purnam. Yeah. But we can understand that, we can realize that only when we take these small steps, first listening to the conscience, then listening to the inner voice once that flowers within. And that is what I think was the essence of what Gandhi was trying to say and do. Hind Swaraj, mm -hmm. Swa plus Raj, uh, the ability to rule yourself so that we never ever set the conscience aside and then we never ever set the inner voice aside. What go Today what's happening? There's a war on virus okay. to combat COVID, uh, injections, inoculations and so on. But that's a very reductionistic way of understanding reality. Which has arisen because we have confined geometry to three dimensions. Which is to some extent natural because in our usual state of consciousness, we can imagine only three dimensions. We cannot imagine anything beyond three dimensions. But if we keep listening to our conscience, and reach that level where we can contact the inner voice within. Mm. Then we go beyond. This is where I would connect it with what the Dishon concept is. Mm. The real Anand comes when we graduate from the part to the whole. Because then everyone and everything is included within us. And then the kind of joy that comes and Dishon school of leadership, right? So we need leaders who will have that attitude.